Part two of chapter 27 focuses on the vestibular system. And before we get into details about how the vestibular system works, I want you guys just to sit back and think about how important our sense of balance actually is. It's something we take for granted, I think, when we're walking about, but it's pretty impressive how we're able to maintain our maintain balance, right? So imagine that this system has to operate so quickly, so instantaneously, in the sense that every step you take has to be carefully coordinated with all those muscles in your vision. And so actually walking down the street and not falling over is a pretty impressive task. And a good example of how instantaneous your, this system is, is looking at the vestibular uh, ocular reflex or the VOR, right? So this is a reflex where if you focus on some object in the distance and then start moving your head around, and you should be able to maintain focus on that object. I mean, think about what's going on, right? So you're totally changing the position of your head in space, but all those muscles in your eyeball are actually able to adapt instantaneous and, and react instantaneously so that you can maintain that uh, vi that visual focus on that, that visual acuity and so you can go and even whip your hair all around like Willow Smith and still maintain a certain, some certain semblance of focus it's kind of interesting that to even you know if you go play uh, dizzy bat where you go and you spin your head around a bat and then try to hit a baseball what's actually happening here you know how can you combat that so you're messing effectively with this vestibular system so what we're going to talk about in the next couple slides is effectively how the vestibular system works and if you remember that the vestibular cochlear nerve right is CN8 Right? So we're really dealing with this structure that's kind of paired together within the, it's actually this whole structure is located within the temporal bone. And, you know, think about how, if you have an ear infection, how does that affect your sense of balance? Right? How does your vision affect your sense of balance? Think about how many different things tie into it. And what's really interesting is that these basic fundamental parts that make up the vest, uh, vestibular apparatus are really pretty simple in their concept. There's really not a lot to them. And so we're going to talk about two different parts, uh, the two chambers, which are the saccule and the utricle, and the three semicircular ducts. And again, they follow the same principle. They're just organized slightly differently. So the saccule and utricle uh, are based around what they call macula. And we'll see this term, we've already seen it when we talk about the eye, there's a macula in the back on the retina, which houses a high concentration of cells. And within the saccule and utricle, the macula is going to be this high density of stereocilia or hairs kind of grouped together in this uh, glycoprotein gelatinous mass. Um, it, it, within this uh, gelatinous mass, there sits with these are called otoliths or calcium carbonate stones. And these things just kind of act like weights. And they assist this gelatinous math, mass in stimulating the hair cells. So imagine this the vestibular system, the basic principle is that as you move your head or you move your body, the these stone filled jello is gonna move over these hair cells in certain ways and at certain intensities. And the way that it moves over it is going to, de uh, depend, is going to uh, determine how you, your relative's uh, feeling in space. So those are, that's how it's going to stimulate the vestibular nerve. So when you are sitting at rest, those, that gelatinous mass is just sitting upright. Uh, the hair cells are sitting straight up. There's no stimulation going to the vestibular nerve. As soon as you move, those, that weight, that weighted membrane is going to move or bend those stereocilia and it's going to send that signal that oh, I'm moving. Right? And so uh, when you have, really when you sense this is through acceleration of some point. And right with the saccule, 
you're dealing with kind of linear acceleration when you're moving in one plane and eventually you hit uh, you know cruise control in your car and you lose that sensation of acceleration and you come to a rest and you feel like you can operate normally even though you're traveling at 60 miles an hour it's the same principle if you go skydiving uh, if you kind of go and jump out, you're going to hit, you're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm falling until you hit terminal velocity. And then you don't really feel uh, that same sensation as falling. You kind of feel like you're in a wind tunnel, but you don't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm falling. The semicircular ducts are really dealing with the same basic principle. They're just dealing with angular acceleration. And so there are three ducts each set up 90 degrees from each other, so existing in the X, Y, and Z plane. And each one of those is filled with endolymph, which is the same stuff that you see in the cochlear duct. Right? So it's mostly this kind of uh, gooey, potassium-rich stuff. Within each uh, endolymph sits a crista ampullaris. So it's this structure that sits around uh, some cilia. Um, the, at the head of that crista ampullaris is a structure called a cupola, and sometimes you see that term, um, like at the, the White House has a cupola, it's kind of this bell tower, or this dome-shaped appearance. And so the crista ampullaris, uh, the cupola of the crista ampullaris is really where the action is happening. And so the, 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 cupola, or the cupola, what's happening is each one of these uh, crystal ampullaris in each one of these semicircular ducts is going to respond to different angular accelerations. So, right, so if you're kind of tumbling through space, depending on which plane uh, you're tumbling in and how fast, you're going to stimulate each one of these things in a different intensity, in a different way. And so you're going to have be able to feel, okay, I'm moving to the right or I'm moving to the left. You can have that sensation because you're going to be stimulating uh, the semicircular ducts in different ways. Right? And so, it, again, it's the same principle. This kind of endolymph is going to lag behind and push the cupola in a certain way. And again, alcohol is going to affect the concentration of endolymph, so it's going to respond and move differently over the cupola, and it's going to, your brain is not really in tune with what's going on, uh, visually, so you, you get this visual, uh, you kind of get this feeling, even if you're just laying there in bed, you kind of have the spins. And what's happening is your body, uh, the cues from your vestibular system are not adding up to the cues in your visual system. Your brain, your vestibular system saying, hey, I'm moving. Your eyes are saying, no, you're not, you idiot, you've just been drinking. And so you kind of have this motion where it does, it feels like you're falling in space, but you're not actually uh, doing that. Okay, so that's really it for the vestibular system. I just wanted to hit this one more time. Uh, if you remember back to when we looked at part one in the cochlea, you should be able to give me uh, all these, identify all these structures, and especially when we start talking about the tectoral membrane and the organ of corti, you should be able to give me the basic function of how we hear. And carrying on into the vestibular system, you should be able to just identify some of those basic structures, right? the semicircular ducts versus the, the saccule and the utricle, and then give me some basic functions associated.